Life without Buster Posey. It is hard to fathom if you're a fan of the San Francisco Giants. It is hard to imagine uh, this guy not being a part of this team moving forward. It is hard to imagine that what we witnessed yesterday uh, during that press conference was even real. It is really, I'm in like the denial stage of the stages of loss. And I've personally, honestly been through a lot of different emotions, and I'm sure you have as well. So we're going to talk all about that press conference. There was a lot that Posey said. There were some things that stood out from Farhan Zaidi personally about his experience with Posey, and then also talking about the future of this team without him, which again, I can't even believe it. So we'll get into all of that next on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Download the Spotify Greenroom app and find one of our Locked on Rooms. So coming up on today's show, we're going to talk about this press conference that was held yesterday Uh, with Buster Posey sitting up there with his wife, with Larry Bear, with Greg Johnson, with Farhan Zaidi, uh, with Bruce Bochy in attendance, with Gabe Kapler in attendance, with Bobby Evans in attendance. It was just an unreal scene, a surreal scene for me personally. And as I alluded to, I've been through the ringer of emotions myself. At first, I was like, okay, this is not that unexpected. If you've been listening to the show a lot, you know that we've talked about this a ton as a possibility. So I was analytical. I broke down the career numbers and and his his legacy. Uh, And then watching the press conference, I got sad, as I'm sure anyone anyone who watched it uh, throughout the entire region, uh, young, old, whatever, people tearing up, I'm sure, watching this press conference. And then today I'm in denial. Like, I just can't believe it. And so, yeah, we're going to talk about the press conference and the takeaways, right? The big takeaways, first of all, we're just, you know, hearing Posey talk. He was resolute in his decision. There wasn't any wavering. Uh, Giants president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi, as usual, being uh, humorous, made a joke. (laughs) One of the first things he said was, are you sure, Buster, like, I just want to make sure you're absolutely sure that you want to do this because it is a huge loss for them. And it honestly sounded like it took Zaidi not by surprise, but that they had hoped that he would decide to keep playing. And so, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about this later. We talked about it some yesterday. Where do the Giants go from here after having a player who could still, it could be argued, was the best at his position in the game. Uh, Pretty much from the day he showed up, and it was true on the day that he hung him up, arguably the best player at his position in the game, one of the best players in the game overall, and he's gone. And so I just can't believe it. But, I mean, he, he was sure of the decision, so that helps obviously he was he's not gonna knowing Posey he's not gonna make a decision that he would come to regret he he's ready and he's hanging them up and uh I don't know he he plans to move back to Georgia 
it was said uh, by Posey during his remarks. Um, he's got a lot of extended family. Both his family and his wife's fam family are in Georgia. So he spent the last 13 years or so here in the Bay Area. They had a home in the East Bay, but it sounds as though uh, they probably have plans to sell the house. I'm just speculating on this, but plans to sell the house and move back to Georgia in the near future. And he mentioned uh, because of COVID, he hasn't seen a lot of family over there. And there's like a, a niece or something that has that they haven't even met yet because of COVID. So anyway, family guy wants to be with family. And I'm sure Posey is happy in a lot of ways to be out of the spotlight. And he probably just wants to go be a dad in Georgia, be around family. And his time here is done. And it's just incredibly sad, is it not? Is anybody else just incredibly uh, sad about this? But he did say that, I mean, he said that he'd be rooting for the Giants. That's like a cliche, but it, it did sound genuine that he has interest in just staying in the Giants family for life. And so what that would look like would be occasional visits to the ballpark, maybe at some point down the road, a more involved role. But, but honestly, I doubt it knowing Posey. I don't know him personally, but from what I've seen observing him for the last 13 years, he probably wants to just go be out of the spotlight and be a dad and be around family. And that's, he's probably kind of done with the baseball chapter of his life. He talked about, this is like changing subjects, but he talked about uh, pain. He never really ever talked about pain as an excuse injuries as an excuse. We don't often talk about it on this show. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, as I said, and we don't talk about it often because he doesn't talk about it. But he mentioned that the the pain that he felt on a daily basis is something he's not going to miss and was a reason he decided to step away from the game. And I mean, he had a major hip injury, had major hip surgery, and we talk about his decline in 2018 and 2019. But, he, I mean, a catcher dealing with hip issues is a recipe for trouble. And he still managed to be a really good player even in his down years. He was at least average even in his worst seasons. And that was only a short period of time. The rest of it was mostly great. And so um, to hear him just kind of open up and be honest about some things not that he wasn't honest in the past, but he just doesn't talk about himself hardly ever. So just to hear, I don't know, it's worth watching. If you haven't had a chance, you can find it on YouTube, uh, the Giants YouTube channel, and probably also NBC Sports Bay Area. If they have a YouTube channel, you can watch this. And any Giants fan who cares about Buster Posey, I think it's worth the roughly one hour uh, commitment to watch. So anyway, we'll keep talking about this next. I want to talk about something Farhan Zaidi said, a personal story about his relationship with Posey that made a huge impact on him, and it was a genuine story. And also what Zaidi said about the future of the Giants without Buster Posey at the catcher position, and also just what he means beyond just his production on the field. So we'll get into all of that in a minute, but switching gears... I want you to know that I love Thanksgiving, <laughs> all of the good food and treats and plenty of them, but maybe you want a yummy dessert that isn't so high in calories and sugar. That is very important to me. I tend to not eat dessert at all because of the sugar content, but that makes it a perfect time for Built Bars uh, because they taste like candy bars. You can get uh, Built Bars that you can replace the coconut cream pie as an example with co with a coconut built bar or for me personally go for a raspberry built bar instead of that raspberry pie lots of delicious flavors but without the high sugar content and they're all covered in 100% real chocolate so just absolutely uh, delicious go to builtbar.com and use promo code locked15 and you can get 15% off your next order use promo code locked15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, we're going to get more into Buster Posey. 
uh, retiring. Wow. I mean, can you believe it? I just, I still think of him as that young uh, baby faced player who showed up in 2010 and just immediately transformed this team. And if you want to hear about, you know, all the memories and all the accolades uh, for Posey, we talked all about that yesterday on the show. But today it's kind of a reaction to the press conference and uh, reacting to some of the things that everybody had to say. I thought everybody's remarks were touching and moving. And it was just, it was a genuine kind of love fest, but it wasn't over the top and it wasn't false at all. And Posey, I mean, just even in this goodbye press conference, just generally uh, stoic, generally really thoughtful and honest. And he, it's not that he isn't honest in the past, but like he he opened up a little bit more about some things that he normally is a little more quiet about uh, with the pain just being, a, being an example. While he was playing, he just wasn't going to use that as an excuse. Um, so yeah, it was just definitely worth watching. Thanks again for watching this show and making it your first listen every day. A lot of you are not watching, but you're listening. But anyway, I want you to know also we are on YouTube. So for those of you who are watching, thank you for checking us out here. For those of you not, you can check us out on YouTube as well every single weekday. So anyway, just continuing uh, to talk about some of the takeaways. I want to get to that Farhan Zaidi story. The story goes as follows, and there's a lot to say about this. But you remember when Zaidi was hired in the 2019 offseason, early in the offseason, it was around uh, this point. It was right after the World Series because the Dodgers were in the playoffs were they in the world yeah they were in the world series against i'm yeah it was in 2018 i'm sorry uh it doesn't matter but zaidi was hired and immediately what was the reaction the reaction was negative there were i mean let's be honest we don't know i think that twitter distorts things just to give you my opinion on that and so a lot of times especially then and also when Gabe Kapler was hired, there was a lot of backlash and negativity, but I don't know how much of that actually represented Giants fans at large, and how much of it is just the Twitter effect, where even if you've got a couple hundred angry people on Twitter, that appears to make a loud noise, and you see it, everybody sees it, and we all think, wow, this is people's reaction, but maybe it's just a a small group, or some much smaller percentage than it seems. But anyway, at least on Twitter, uh, there was a lot of negativity. Also on the radio, I would go so far as to say, and even what irks me is when uh, legitimate journalists were kind of negative without having really good reason for it, or at least being closed-minded. I mean, there was, what I remember was there was a season ticket holder event And Farhan Zaidi was kind of attacked by some fans, season ticket holders even. And this was after a year in charge. And it was after the Kevin Pillar non-tender. I'm sure a lot of you listening remember the crazy reaction to Kevin Pillar being non-tendered. It was kind of an insane reaction, to be honest. Kevin Pillar was solid, but the, the projected salary in arbitration was more than he was worth. So it was kind of a logical non-tender. He ended up getting a lot less money, so it was clearly the right decision. Uh, But, man, did fans not like that decision. But keep in mind, who brought Kevin Pillar to the Giants in the first place? It was Farhan Zaidi. So the whole thing was insane. But thankfully, 2020, uh, how they played better, and then 2021, winning 107 games. I think that uh, fans understand that the team is in good hands with Zaidi in charge, and... I mean, imagine he took over a awful roster situation and then people basically blamed him uh, for not doing enough in the first offseason. I don't know. It was insane. And and what what stood out to me from this press conference, to get to my point, is that Zaidi said, essentially, when he took over, people he knew, he heard, were saying he was a Dodgers mole which that was another insane thing that people were saying that, you know, they hired him from the Dodgers and uh, the moves he was making were not competitive for the Giants. And it proved that he was uh, an inside 
agent helping the Dodgers. Again, who actually believed that? Probably next to no one, if not actually no one. But he said that yesterday at this press conference, and he also said that uh, people thought of him as a numbers guy and he didn't fit the ethos of the Giants. And I think that's more uh, true that people really did think that and it was somewhat widespread. So the point is, Zaidi said he heard all that and he was, quote, rattled by it. So that hurts me. That That's sad that we did that to him. I wish that we had been more open-minded and welcoming and... It was just not cool what people did uh, when he was hired. I know I don't know what percentage of Giants fans that was, but it happened, and he said he was affected by it, and I think we should be embarrassed about that. But anyway, he said that within days or however long of being hired, Buster Posey reached out to him, and it wasn't just to congratulate him via text and just say, hey, congratulations, and then be done with it. Buster Posey said to him, let's meet. He wanted to meet with Farhan Zaidi. And the story Zaidi told was that they met at Oracle Park in some back room somewhere. And it was a multiple hour meeting where they just went over what the plan was, what Zaidi's vision was. And Buster just wanted to, uh, Zaidi said he was probably sizing him up a little bit, but also what he ultimately said was that he walked away from that meeting with Buster feeling like there was nothing that could have made him feel more welcomed to the Giants than Buster Posey uh, doing that with him. And it it there's a reason for that. There's a lot of reasons for that. But one of the reasons is that Posey just is who he is, right? He's a superstar player who also carries himself with stoicism and humility and he leads by his actions. And so just the action of this, of a player of his stature, a player who is like the face of this franchise, just meeting with him and being present, I'm sure in that meeting and, uh, make being respectful and welcoming and, uh, listening and having an open mind. I'm sure it just really affected Zaidi. And that's what he said. And so, That's just the type of guy Posey is, and not every player would do that, especially a veteran player who's very established as a superstar, face of the franchise, and, you know, Zaidi was kind of different and an outsider, and it did take an open mind to be open to hearing what he had to say, and Posey, there's a lot of players, the, you know, grizzly veteran players, potentially, who could just be like, "Ah, I don't want anything to do with this guy, I don't like this decision, but Posey has generally uh, embraced it. He embraced Kapler kind of in the same way. Posey was like the only player at Kapler's introductory uh, press conference. And Posey has embraced uh, the coaching staff. And he mentioned how uh, Donnie Ecker, Justin V. Lee, Dustin Land, he called them out by name, uh, helped him have the season that he had in 2021 and helped the Giants be good enough to win 107 games. So anyway, coming up next, we'll just continue to have this conversation. Uh, There's a lot more to get to, and we're going to talk about what Zaidi said about the future of this position uh, when he was asked about it point blank. How do you move on from Buster Posey? So all of that next, but first, we're back and better than ever. A new web a new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit using our promo code LOCKEDON to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right, we're going to continue to talk about this reality that is hitting us now. Buster Posey no longer going to play for the San Francisco Giants. I can't believe it. 
But let's talk about what Farhan Zaidi said when he was asked about uh, the future of this position. So, again, he joked like, Buster, are you sure that this is what you want to do? So it sounded like they they believed that there was a chance he was coming back. They held that $22 million club option over Posey, so they could have just brought him back for that price, but they can't because he's retiring. Uh, there was a buyout, but they weren't going to exercise that. They would at least pick up the option. So Posey's walking away from $22 million plus, and that's very Buster Posey. It's not about the money for him. He just decided it was time, and that's it, right off into the sunset. And sadly, I don't know how often he's going to be around because uh, he doesn't really enjoy the spotlight. Somebody asked him about if he was gonna, if he had plans to maybe be on TV as an analyst or something, and his immediate response was, "Yeah, because I like to talk." <laughs> so that's a no. That is a flat out no. Like immediately, he doesn't want to be around and talking and whatever, you know, he wants to just be, you know, go to a quiet little neighborhood in Georgia and raise his family. That's the way I read that uh, moment. He'll be around, of course. He understands who he is. He understands how much he means to us. Um, so he'll be around. He's going to have his number retired at some point, I would imagine. He's going to be elected to the Hall of Fame, I would imagine, at some point. And honestly, the type of impact that he had, he probably ends up getting a statue. He's that important to this franchise. So I just want to say thank you. I know he's not listening, but I just have to express how thankful I am. And I know I speak for a lot of Giants fans or maybe every Giants fan. There's not a Giants fan alive who doesn't adore Buster Posey. And there's not a baseball fan alive who, I mean... Maybe there are some, but any serious baseball fan who appreciates the history of the game recognizes what Buster Posey has meant to the San Francisco Giants and to the game at large. So anyway, I said I was going to talk about the future of this position. Clearly, I'm not ready, right? I'm kind of in denial and in the grieving stage here, to be honest. I mean, it is it's a big loss, and Posey touched on that, how uh, he talked about what sports mean to people and of course he was thoughtful as ever but he basically he said like we're on people's tvs every night and so people really do feel like they know him and he said it's a little weird you know when people come up to him and his wife maybe if they're at dinner or whatever and people feel like they know him and not his wife but they you know and he doesn't know them but that's just the reality of how he realizes that he means that much to all these people and he's right. Like, and he talked about when he was a kid, and and how uh, the players on the Atlanta Braves, who he grew up, grew up rooting for, touched his life, and he he feels humbled, extremely humbled, that he has had that impact on other people, and he recognizes. I mean, he's never gonna say it, but he has to know just how much of an impact he's had, which has been huge, more than pretty much any player that I can ever remember for the San Francisco Giants. I mean, there was Bonds, but that was a whole different thing. Posey, just the the humble superstar and the three championships and and all that, it, it, it's going to be a long time, I think, before the Giants have another player like Buster Posey. But they've got another catcher who is a top prospect for them, and that's Joey Bart. And, you know, what Farhan Zaidi said was really interesting uh, when he was asked, what is the future at this position? He basically said, this makes us aggressively try to introduce Joey Bart. Like, you have to clear a path for Joey Bart. He basically said, it's time. And he had, unlike in 2020, uh, when Bart was rushed to the major leagues because of the Posey opt-out, um, Joey Bart had a full season at AAA. So he's got that upper minors experience. That being said... He, Zaidi, would have said that no matter what. If they didn't believe in Joey Bart, he's not going to come out and say, we don't believe in Joey Bart, so we've got to figure something else out. He would say kind of this same response no matter what. And so, and it's not that, you know, don't believe in Joey Bart. That's not really the right way to put it. But it's like, if they have real doubts about his ability to be a good major league player right now, 
that he's still going to say what he said. And so I continue to think it's a possibility that something rather drastic happens at this position. Uh, Zaidi did say they intend to pick up or to tender a contract to Kurt Casale. He can be brought back. That is a good thing, kind of filling potentially the same role, potentially a bigger role. I mean, not even potentially good shot for a bigger role. Like if, if the plan really is to go to Bart, but he struggles like he did in 2020, and all you've got otherwise is Casale, that would mean more, a lot more Casale, and he becomes maybe your main catcher. But so I just don't know if I see that being what ends up happening going into 2022. And so, yeah, I think they'll continue to add. They're not just going to have Casale and Bart. I think they would add at least another veteran to a, to compete for playing time. Uh, but it remains a possibility that they make a bigger move, maybe trade some players and get a more established catcher. There are some catchers out there on the trade market. Uh, Gary Sanchez comes to mind. I'm not I, I haven't even looked at his numbers recently. I know that obviously he's had some success and he's had a lot of failure also. So I'm not suggesting that's the right move, but I know that uh, he's out there as a possible uh, target as are other players, right? And so I don't know exactly what the future holds, but Zaidi did say the plan is to aggressively clear space for Bart and just give him that opportunity. This motivates them to give Bart that opportunity. And it makes sense because uh, they need that upside. Like with Posey's absence, there's a big demand for a, a lot of production to be filled. So anyway, of course, 26 minutes could never uh, cover the entire story here. And so we're going to continue talking about Buster Posey's retirement uh, for a long time. Uh, and and uh, going into next week, there's more I want to get to kind of about Buster Posey, the person. I meant to get into that today, and, and it just didn't happen. But the fact that he was so humble and the effect that had on the clubhouse, uh, if your superstar catcher doesn't think much of himself, not that he's negative about himself, but doesn't think he's so important, then it made the rest of the players be like, well, I, I must not be that important either. Uh, and so there was a hum uh, humility to the Giants, and Posey uh, led the way with that. And losing him potentially really changes the dynamic in that clubhouse. So that's more that we'll get into eventually. Coming up on Monday, it's uh, Monday Mailbag Monday, so look out on Twitter for a prompt. You can follow me at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much, so thank you in advance, and thank you so much to everyone who's done so already. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to be with you again on Monday. We're going to have some answers about uh, club options and qualifying offer stuff that we'll get to as well. So anyway, can't wait to be with you then. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.